Hey guys, welcome back to the Wild Dog Project 365, episode 1206. Guys, if you're following along on YouTube, please jump on over to thewilddoc.com. Check out all of our full length episodes. That's where we house them. Found myself at BU today uh, and bumped into some great strength and conditioning guys here. We got Ben and Tim. And the cool thing is, is like whenever I get to bump into some really educated people, we started going back and forth about training regimens and regimes. <laughs> but uh, we were talking about training frequency and common training faults and this and that. We went on to a million different tangents, but we decided to make a concise topic of uh, talking about GPP versus SPP. And these guys are going to go into it uh, a little bit themselves. But first, Tim, tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, so I'm an assistant strength and conditioning coach here at Boston University. I work with a uh, track and field team, uh, men's crew. Uh, program for the freshman developmental uh, for men's lacrosse, uh, as well as their speed program, and then uh, women's soccer. And Ben, I'm also assistant strength conditioning coach here at Boston University. I work with men's basketball, men's soccer, and the swim and dives here, here at Boston University as well. Awesome. So I, the thing that I picked up there was development, uh, like developmental portions. Uh, so that's where we get into GPP versus SPP, and that's where our conversation kind of is going to go to now. What? First of all, define GPP versus SPP for me. Tell me about like what we're looking at there. Um, so essentially, if you just if you just look at the like a typical annual plan for um, any team, football team for example, uh, you have a competition period yes. um, in which you're trying to peak your training towards. So that that training and that competition period. So G is for the general. The general. S, S is for specific. Right. So, yeah. So very sport specific versus overall foundational whatever that is, athleticism or whatever you want to call it, right? Yep. Group it and everything. So you you focus more on the GPP aspect of it, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so with that, um, we I wanted to touch on some things that we came up with was, as far as like a common fault, and it doesn't mean everyone's doing it, it just means this is what we see, is what, frequency and duration, or they're, they're just not at a certain like aspect, a certain area, a long enough time. So if we were to make it super simple and say squat cycle, strength cycle overall, right? A strength cycle. How long should somebody be doing a strength cycle? Like, like what are the minimums? Do we have those numbers? Yeah. So uh, it kind of depends on the developmental age of the athlete. But for somebody who we'd see in the in a Division One college, probably uh, a four week cycle um, is typically what we work off of for most of our phases. Uh, but that can range from two to, to six weeks. Um, but typically, you'd want to see you know four weeks. Um, so with that, how many times have you seen those guys in the like in the gym during that four weeks or that six weeks? Ideally, uh, three to four. Three um, to four. And yeah. how long are their their like actual workout sessions? Uh, we typically get them for about an hour to an hour and a half. Okay. So, so we're looking at like an hour, hour and a half, three or four times a week, four weeks, with the idea of a, a very specific strength cycle, mm -hmm. right? But that's when I say specific, I'm not necessarily meaning. Sport specific, I'm saying specific as general, yeah. general strength, right? So with with that, like, is there certain tidbits that you could give the public that, as far as if they were getting into it, how would they go about doing it? Um, so you know, just kind of keep it simple. Use the minimal essential uh, strain, minimal essential dosage. Uh, you don't have to uh, try to squeeze a whole bunch of stuff into your training session. Um, just keep you know, keep the uh, volumes intensities pretty simple. Uh, make sure you stay on top of your frequency because consistency at the end of the day is going to be uh, the biggest driving factor in whether you gain that adaptation of strength. Right, absolutely. So I, I love what, what Tim just said there. He talked about the consistency of it because we're going to get so much more out of doing a little bit often than doing a lot not very often, right? Like you can't go to the gym, do a thousand bicep curls once a month and expect your, your biceps to get bigger, yeah. right? You'll get a lot more benefit if you went to the gym every day and did 10. Right? So that's the minimal essential strain. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. I also think when it comes to GPP, one common misconception is you think, you know, west side, sled pushes, uh, sled drags, farmers carries, things like that. And like, that can be an element of it, but a big piece of that too is the basic movement patterns. If you look at like Dan John, he'll talk about hip hinge, you know, carries, squats, presses, pulls, and you need to have a, a kind of semblance of balance between the muscles as well when you go into those movements. So if you're a really strong bencher, are you a really strong puller? And that's an element of general prep as well. It's yeah. like addressing things like muscle balance and mm -hmm. uh, make, 
make sure that's in line with the frequency and as well. To, and to go off that, what Ben just said, so Ben said, you know, you need to be able to squat, hinge, uh, you know, pull your body over a bar, a bar. With the amount of frequency, like you spoke about, if we're seeing these athletes for, you know, three quarters max of the year, mm -hmm. two minimum, maybe four maximum times a week, um, I'd rather spend time on mastering those movements in a general prep phase than doing true general prep work like like just the general strength circuits that Ben was talking about from the west side. Gotcha. So, you know, mastering the basics throughout the whole phase. It doesn't have to be a ton of variation. Okay, awesome. All right, guys, thank you so much. Uh, a lot of, lot of information here, guys. We're gonna end up breaking this down. Hopefully I get to see both of these guys individually. Uh, we're gonna do some topics off that. But if you have questions and comments, like I said, I know everything, there's a lot of stuff there. So post them down below. I'll take those questions, hit these guys back up. We'll try to get a more specific episode out there for you guys, all right? Ben, thank you so much. Thank you, Tim. Tim, thank you so much. Uh, guys, until tomorrow, we're Optimizing Function to optimize performance.